Hello everyone, my name is Liling and I teach at uh, Cape Cote Yoga. I am at home right now in the company of my doggies, my furry friends as you can see. That was Coco who just walked off and this is Rainbow who loves to be on my mat. Um, I'm going to be taking you through a flow that is going to be focused on twisting. So let's begin. You can come onto a seated position, a cross-legged seated position, and you can put yourself out on a block or maybe a blanket. And if you don't have blocks at home, then just maybe grab books or grab some cushions so that you can sit a little bit better. So I'm going to sit on a block. And I'm going to start off with uh, our breath. And I'm going to invite you to put your hands, just have a feel of where your lower rib cage is. Yeah, so you, you feel the pokey bones just at the lower rib cage, and just have your index and your thumbs just gently holding the base of your rib cage. So we're gonna work on a couple of things here. So when we're breathing in, coco. Alright, so here we go again. Let's inhale to allow the rib cage to expand. And then breathe out, just allow the ribcage to soften. Inhaling to expand the ribcage. And then exhaling to allow the ribcage to soften. Inhale to feel an expansion. Exhale a gentle softening. Inhale fully. And exhale completely. Three more. Inhale to expand the cage. And then exhale out to soften. Let's see whether you can drag out the breath a little bit longer. So inhale to expand, expand, expand. And then exhale to contract, contract, contract. Inhale to expand, expand, expand. And then exhale to contract, contract, contract. Well done. And then just placing your hands onto your knees and just see whether you can inhale to expand. So without any guidance from your fingers, just feel it on your ribcage. And then exhale to soften, soften, soften. Two more breaths. Inhale fully. And then exhale completely. One last one. Inhale fully. And then exhale. Well done. Gently open your eyes. Let's interlace the fingers just directly in front of you. Let's press your palms forward towards my direction and straighten out your elbows. Inhale, maybe you lift your arms up towards the ceiling. And as you exhale, you're going to turn the palms back to face yourself. Bend the elbows a little and think about carrying like a big ball in front of you, surrounding your spine and just looking into your belly button, any amount that you can do. And inhale again, press the palms up to the ceiling, straighten your elbows if possible. And as you exhale, rounding your spine, turning your palms back to yourself and your elbows are slightly bent, like you're carrying a big ball, soften the shoulders. Again, inhale to reach your palms up. Maybe this time you like to look up. And as you exhale, let's round the spine. So look at doing a seated cat and cow. Inhale to lift the palms up, straighten out your elbows, maybe you look up. And let's exhale, let's round the spine. Let's go for one last round. Inhale, press your palms up towards the ceiling. And maybe you look up. If your neck is uncomfortable, just look forward. And let's exhale, let's slowly round the spine for one last time. So drawing the belly in, holding a big ball that right in front of you. Maybe you tilt your head side to side. Just release the neck and to release the shoulders. 
And then on your next inhale breath, just gently sit back up, release your arms back down onto the mat, uh, back down onto your knees. And now let's try to come on to. Okay. Let's release the palms down, back onto your knees. And now let's come into a child's pose. So you're going to take the block away from you. So going towards the back of your mat a little bit more. Okay, so my big toes are touching. So I like to have a little bit of space in between my knees so that my torso can go through. Use your hands. Now just press down onto the mat so that you can guide your buttocks just gently back towards your heels. Okay, just wriggle out a little bit left and right, left and right. So you find a little bit more ease in your, in your buttocks, okay? So we're gonna come back up again. Inhale, almost as if you wanna come to a table to pop. So knees are still white, big toes are still touching. And then as you exhale, let's start to release the buttocks back down towards the heels. We try that again. Inhale to lift the buttocks up. And as you exhale, let's root the buttocks back towards the heels. One last time, inhale, let's lift the buttocks up. And as exhale, use your palms, press your buttocks back towards your heels. And maybe we stay there and you will find a very good contact between your buttocks and your heels. You stay there. If not, if you need some form of support, just grab a cushion, maybe grab blankets. So if you need to feel a contact point, buttocks against the heels. And this is what you can do. So you pad up something in between your buttocks and your heels. All right, so now with your buttocks very close to your heels, we're going to start to take your right arm and take your right arm behind your back. So internally rotate the shoulders. See whether your right fingertips maybe can hold on to a piece of clothing on the left side of your waist or your left hands. Then take your left arm and just turn it towards the right side of your mat. Ground the left side of your face down. So maybe the left side of your head down. So take your time. And start to turn the chest up towards the ceiling here. Do whatever that feels comfortable for you, but try not to lift the buttocks up. So just anchoring the buttocks down. Make sure your neck, your head is still relaxed. So if this is not possible for you, maybe you just stay on your elbows and try and drag the chest through towards the right side of your mat. One more full breath here. You try to position your neck in line with the rest of your spine. Lifting the right side of your rib cage up and turning your right shoulder up towards the ceiling. And on the next inhale breath, let's slowly release. Okay, so hands down, support yourself to come up. Let's go towards your left hand. So left hand, roll the shoulder in so that you can bring the left hand behind you. Maybe you grab onto a shirt, maybe you grab onto your inner thighs on the right side. Thread your right arm all the way towards the left side of the room. And this time, arrange your head again. Try to keep the buttocks down so that it's not floating away from the mat. And then lift the left chest and lift the left shoulder up towards the ceiling. Yeah, take a few breaths here. When you feel like there's a stretch coming onto the back of your right shoulder, extending down maybe towards the back of your right arm. Take another two more breaths. Just enjoying the twist. Anchoring the buttocks back. One more full breath. And then exhale up completely. And next inhale breath, lifting the head up. Supporting yourself. Let's release your knees and release your ankles a little so you can shake it out. Then we're going to come to a seated position. So you can wriggle yourself forward, cross your ankles, and then come to seated. Okay? So what we're going to do now is just to stretch out the sides of the hips in order to prepare us for a twist. So your right shin bone is in front of your left shin bone. I'm going to mirror you so you're going to look something like what I look like now. So right shin bone in front of your left. Try to get your shin bones lining up, you know, like two straight lines that are parallel to each other. So if you know that this is going to be easy for you, okay, your sit bones are grounded. If this is going to be easy for you, you can choose option two, which is basically to get your right heel on top of your left knee. So now your right shin bone is stacking on top of your left. Okay, see whether this works. If it hurts the knee, if it hurts the ankles in any way, then just go back to option one. So I'm going to take option one here, feeling my sit bones, and then hands down, maybe just beside your hips. Let's inhale to lift the chest up and try and draw the pubic bone down towards the mat. And as you exhale, you're going to start to gently just walk yourself forward, walk yourself forward, walk yourself forward. Any amount, any degree that you can, as long as your buttocks are still grounded onto the mat. So elbows down maybe. 
You know, if elbows is too much, then stay on your hands and pull the chest forward. Try and position your neck so that you feel that your neck is still in line with the rest of your spine. And just breathing in and out. And you want to feel, again, the base of your ribcage expanding. So inhaling. And then exhaling to soften the shoulders. One more time. Inhale fully. Maybe descending your chest down towards the mat. Another inch, another centimeter. If you're very, very comfortable here, feel free to walk your hands forward. And maybe you lower your head, your forehead down towards the mat. Take another full breath. Exhale out. And then on your next inhale breath, let's slowly lift your body upright. And let's stretch out the legs in front of us. So right leg forward, left leg forward. And then let's pat out the knees. You go to the other side now. So let's go to your left shin in front of your right. So your left shin bone in front of your right shin bone, toes are pointing for ideally. Sit bones are down evenly. So for whatever reason, if one side of the sit bones cannot feel the mat, feel free to sit on a height. Yeah, it's gonna be helpful. So option one, we stay here. Option two, just guide your left shin bone on top of your right knee gently. Sometimes there's a little bit of a gap. As long as you're not feeling, you know, any sharp pain, any sensation that is burning around the knee or the ankles, just try to stay there. So maybe it just needs a little bit of time to release. So we inhale to lift the chest up. Maybe hands can help you. Tilt the pubic bone down, okay? Draw it down towards the mat. And as you exhale, let's gently guide yourself forward. So chest is moving forward, buttocks are still staying back. So inhale, chest is pulling forward. Exhale, buttocks are staying back. Again, inhale, chest continues to pull forward. And then exhale, buttocks are staying back. So maybe you're down onto your palms, you're down onto your elbows. Maybe you close your eyes and you breathe just along the sides of your hips. So in this case, the left outer hip, gonna feel the stretch a little bit more. One more big breath here. And then exhale out completely. And on the next inhale breath, very, very gently lift your body upright. Again, just straightening out the legs in front of you, patting out the knees, maybe just releasing the ankles and just releasing your toes. Then we're gonna to come to a tabletop position. So if you have tender knees, feel free to find a padding on the mat for your knees. So I'm just gonna take the knees on the blanket, like so, okay? And then palms under my shoulders. I'm just gonna take a little bit of time to set myself up so that I can be staying here for a little while, okay? <laughs> on your next inhale breath, we're gonna start to take a few rounds of cat and cow. So lifting the tail, lowering the belly, and then pulling your chest forward. And as you exhale, we're gonna be rounding the spine. So pushing the mat away from you and just tucking the tail. Inhale, lift the tail, lower the belly, pull the chest forward. And as exhale, let's round the spine. So allow the head to move last. So movement starts from the tailbone, so lifting the tail, lowering the belly, pulling the chest forward. Eventually you look forward. And as exhale, draw the tail down, belly up, chest up, and eventually we look towards the belly button. One last round. Inhale to start to arch. So pulling the chest forward, keeping a soft bend in your elbows. Exhale to round the spine. So pressing the mat away from you as you spread your upper back towards the ceiling. On the next inhale breath, let's come back towards the neutral spine. Okay, then we're going to be stepping the right foot forward, so towards the front of the mat. You're going to tuck your back toes first so that we can move the left knee towards the back of your mat a little bit lower if you can. So if this is quite strong for you, just stay down. You can have blocks. So your blocks can be on your hands and you're leaning forward so it takes away any pinch in the lower back. So you still feel a stretch in the front of your left thigh, in the front of your left hip. Then we can relax the back toes. And if you're very, very comfortable here, start to just gradually lift your spine and lift your chest. So you can use the blocks or you can come onto fingertips. So I'm gonna be using the blocks to lift my chest up. 
So my right knee stays on top of right ankle if possible. Okay, pulling the chest up towards the ceiling. Try and draw the lower belly in and lower the tail down towards the mat. So what we want to feel is a stretch in the front of your left hip. So you're around your left hip flexor and the left quad. So if this feels all right for you, you're gonna to start to take your hands maybe away from the block so you can position your hands onto your front thigh. Then let's go back to the breathing that we practiced at the beginning of the, practice, uh, at the, beginning of the session. So your rib cage, I'm gonna use my hands again. So inhale, let's expand the rib cage, lifting the rib cage away from the hips. And as I exhale, I soften the rib cage and the shoulders. We try two more rounds. Inhale to expand the ribcage. As you exhale, draw the belly in and soften the shoulders. One more round. Inhale to lift the ribcage away from your hips. And as you exhale, soften again. Very nice. And then slowly palms back down onto the mat. Okay, we're gonna change legs. So slowly release the right foot, the right knee back down, and then stepping your left leg forward. So if it's challenging to step forward from a kneeling position, you can always take blocks and then just step your left foot forward, okay? And then keep the blocks, arrange your feet first and arrange your legs. So left heel, just right below the left knee. And then your right knee is back and you relax the right toes. So this is gonna be my tighter side. So I'm just gonna give myself a little bit more time to lift my chest away from the mat. And you can always stay down if you want to. So take the blocks, position them to a height that you can use. I'm going to just slowly walk the blocks back, lift the chest up, keep the front knee bent, so keep the opening in the front hip on the right side this time. So you can stay there if you wish, or you start to roll the shoulders back. So we did the breath work in the previous round for the previous leg. I'd like you to maybe take your hands behind you this time. Maybe you'll grab your opposite elbows, okay? Or maybe you're going to have your hands interlaced, your fingers interlaced behind your back. So inhale, you're gonna pull the chest up. And as exhale, try and straighten your arms and pull the shoulders back and away from your ears. So figure out this part of your rib cage again. So inhale to expand. And then exhale to soften and sing the hips down. Again, inhale to expand. Exhale to soften and sing the hips down. One last time, inhale to expand. And let's exhale slowly, coming back. Take your time, just press into the block. And I start to release the left knee back down onto the mat. Okay, we're gonna maybe wriggle out the hips a little, just straight out, left and right. And we're gonna come up to standing. So we're in your Uttanasana, standing for fold towards the front or the top of your mat. I can have my two blocks just right in front, should I need it. Take the blankets away from you. So if you have something there, let us just take it away from you. And I'm gonna to come towards the front. I'm not sure whether you can see me fully. But feet are about hip distance apart. If your hamstrings are a little bit restricted now, bend your knees. Send and lengthen your tailbone towards the back of your mat. Inhale, we pull the chest forward. And as I exhale, I draw the front rib cage in and press my thighs towards the back of my mat. Again, inhale to bend the knees and draw the chest forward. So I'm not worried about my spine, okay? I'm not worried about lowering down towards the mat. As I exhale, only the thighs are pressing back. So chest continues to stay forward, rib cage stays in, hopefully. Inhale, bend the knees. And as I exhale, pressing the thighs back. Okay, two more times. Inhale, we're gonna bend the knees forward. Keep your chest extending forward. As you exhale, press your thighs back. So when you start to get a little bit more open in the back of your legs, feel free to take your hands down towards your legs. One last time, inhale. And as I exhale, I'm gonna press the thighs towards the back of the room and then slowly lower into my Uttanasana. I'm standing forward fold, so releasing the neck. Releasing the jaw, and you can stay here. You can always hold on to your legs. Or some of you might be able to start to touch your palms, maybe fingers down towards the mat. So lift the kneecaps up, the thighs up, hollow the belly in, and then maybe just guiding your chest down towards your legs. One more full breath. Feel the full opening in the back of your legs. You might even give it a little bit of massage, a squeeze, or maybe a little bit of pounding, and just massage the back of your legs here. One more full breath. 
and then exhale out completely. On your next inhale breath, we re-bend our knees, hands down, maybe on the mat, maybe you need your blocks again. We're gonna step back towards a lunge. Yeah, so towards a lunge. So that's what we did earlier, except now our back knee is lifted. So I'm gonna take an inhale, and maybe I stay here, or maybe I still need to drop my left knee down. But if I'm staying here, I'm gonna slowly lift the torso upright. So you can do this with your back knee down as well, okay? So torso upright. So my inhalation, I'm gonna to start to reach my arms up towards the ceiling. As I exhale, I'm gonna draw the elbows down behind my back. So squeeze the shoulder blades. Inhale to lift the arms up. So you can always do this with your back knee down. As you exhale, let's draw the elbows towards the back of your body. One more time, inhale to reach the arms up, expand the ribcage. And as you exhale, draw the elbows towards the back to squeeze the shoulder blades and maybe I lift my back knee up again. And then slowly, palms down towards the mat. Step the left leg forward. And then inhale again, pull your chest. Exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold. Let's go to the other side. So bend your knees a lot. Take your blocks if you need to. Step your right leg back. So remember we can do it with the knees back down. So you might find your padding again. Yeah, lifting the chest. And this time I'm going to take my arms forward. So those of you who want to take your back leg up into a high lunge, go for it. So I'm going to take my arms forward, inhale. So it's about shoulder height. As I exhale, I'm going to pretend I can pull my arms back towards the back of the room. So I'm going to try to keep the uh, uh, elbows level about shoulder height as well. So inhale, I reach the palms forward. And as I exhale, I'm going to drag my elbows back. So as if I'm trying to pull the arrow back. Inhale, arms forward again. And as I exhale, I'm going to pull back, squeeze the shoulder blades, lift the chest and lift the ribcage. Exhale, slowly palms down onto the mat, onto the block. Lift the back knee up if it's not already lifted. And then we step the right leg forward. Inhale for a half lift. And exhale, folding. So Uttanasana, thoughtful. On to the next inhale breath. Let's slowly re-bend the knees. And then this time I'm going to step the left leg back. So back heel should go in and down. So that roughly you feel that the front heel intersects with the arch of the back foot. Take the right block, if you need a block, inside of your right knee. And I'm going to start to position my arm and my knee to be together. On your next inhale breath, side angle partial Konasana. Left arm up to the ceiling. So if you have shoulder restrictions, left hand can just go to the waist. Okay, inhale to turn the chest, turn the ribcage. Get the back leg straight and heart the right buttock in. Uh, and if you want an extension, left arm forward towards the top of your mat if you'd like to. Take another two more full breaths here. So feel the opening in the right inner thigh and it's an open twist. Okay, so take one more big breath here. And let's exhale, let's lower the palms down. Let's have the back knee back down onto the mat so you can separate the block again. And this time from all the strength that you've built in your legs, you're going to lift the body upright. Take your left elbow, so we're going to inhale, left arm up, and then left elbow, just hooking outside of the right knee. Stay stable in the legs. So if you like to, you can bring your palms together and stay here. So press your palms together, or maybe your top hand can form into a fist. So you're pressing the palm down to rotate and to turn the chest. Try to extend your chest forward and the crown of your forward, so as if you're lying onto maybe a little cushion or pillow behind your head and breathe. So feel the turning of the rotation in the torso. Option for you, so if this is not good enough, not strong enough, feel free to lift your back knee up. I don't know about you, but I'm perspiring. <laughs> so lifting the back knee up and turning and spinning your chest up towards the ceiling. One more big breath. And as you exhale, very, very slowly, you might need to put your back knee down first and then turn your palms back down onto the mat. Step your left leg forward towards the front. Inhale for a half lift. And then exhale, Uttanasana, forward fold again. So diving your chest down. Let's change sides, so bend the knees. Hold the blocks if you need to. Step your right leg back. So right knee down, sorry, right heel down. So heel to arch roughly. Take the block under your left hand inside. So the block can be lower if you wish, 
Okay, or you may not be using any block, but we want to make sure that the left buttock stays in. So I'm hugging in and my left knee is tracking forward. I'm just going to use one block here so that I feel easy in the spine. Okay, inhale, back leg straight, right arm reaching up, maybe right hand to the waist. So you want to press the back foot down and pull the chest forward towards the front of your mat. And we breathe. Option for you, right arm overhead, side angle, Paschvakanasana. Turn the ribcage up, turn the chest. And maybe one more full breath. You want to feel the full extension from your right pinky toe all the way to your right pinky finger. Big breath here. And as exhale, slowly come back down. So both palms can come down onto blocks on mat. Lift the back heel up, lower the back knee down. Okay. Now we take our time. You know, very, very slowly, start to lift the body up right first. So you want to find a firm foundation in your legs, lifting the body up right. So right elbow, or maybe the right arm. So if the elbow can't go up all the way, just lift the right arm and it can stay up for a twist as well. If not, let's lift the right arm up and the right elbow outside of the left knee, left thigh. So keep the front knee tracking forward, so solid, okay? If you like to left hand, you can form a fist. Press it down into your right palm and start to turn and rotate the spine. Pull your chest forward and try and stay here. Only if you want to, you can attempt to lift the back knee up and away from the mat. So keep your hips as stable as possible. Use the strength of your legs to power the twist in your spine. Two more full breaths. So stay strong. One more big breath. And then gently, palms back down onto the mat. Take your time, slowly lower the knees down. And then maybe, let's just come into Vajrasana, just for a short break. Sitting towards your heels. So if this is not possible, then maybe we just choose to sit in a simple cross-legged. Okay, hands onto your knees or your thighs. Inhale to feel the ribcage expanding again. And then exhale to slow the breath down. One more, inhale to feel the ribcage expanding. And exhale to slow the breath down. And gently opening up your eyes. Let's continue from here. So palms back down onto the mat. Lift your hips away from your heels. Curl your toes under, come towards the front again. Okay, inhale for a half lift, Adho Tanasana. And as you exhale, Uttanasana, fourth fold. Taking your two blocks, ideally, okay, so your blocks are at the highest setting. We're going to step the left leg back, just about a leg distance. Right toes, they're pointing forward. Your left toes, your back toes, they're turning outwards about 45 degrees. I'm going to pull the chest out first and try and attempt to get the right leg straight. If this is not possible, then maybe you need to stack a second block below your first block. Okay, so my first block can be a lot higher and place your left hand onto the block. So make sure the block is stable, right hand to the sacrum. Inhale to pull the chest forward, revolve triangle, Pavarita Trikonasana. And as I exhale, I'm going to start to turn the torso and turn the ribcage. Whatever I can afford, as long as the legs remain straight. So I feel the stretch from the outer leg all the way to the outer hip and maybe into the lower back. Okay. Those of you who are quite comfortable here, maybe your blocks need not be so high and you can continue to turn the chest and turn the ribcage. Breathing, so strong legs here. Maybe right arm up towards the ceiling. Lengthen the right side of your torso from your right hip to your right shoulder. Take another big breath. This is quite a strong pose, so stay wherever you are and breathe into the moment. And as we exhale, slowly, slowly come back down. Take your time, stepping the left leg forward, shifting the blocks to the other side so that we can walk on the other side. So stack the blocks up whichever way you need. So my right foot is going to step back, right toes turn up 45, straightening up both legs first, right hand. So if your left foot is in front, your right hand to the outside. The not so strong version could be on the inside as well, but try for the outside if you can, okay? So lifting up higher if you need. 
left palm to your lower back, your sacrum. Pull your chest forward first, straighten up both legs. Then as you exhale, we slowly rotate the spine, we turn the chest and we turn the rib cage. We need to pick the right height for the blocks. So right height for your support. So if the support is too high or too low, adjust until you feel like it is right height for your spine. Okay, spine should feel parallel to the mat. And then lifting the left chest up, left rib cage up. Maybe your left arm comes up eventually. So pulling the chest forward with your bottom hand. Reaching up with your top hand, seasoning your legs together. One more big breath. And as you exhale, slowly, slowly come back down. Woo. And then palms down onto the mat. I'm taking the blocks away from me first. Then slowly stepping the right leg forward. Shaking out the body. And then maybe just take a soft bend in Uttanasana. So knees are bent, you can choose to hold on to your opposite elbows and just let your head dangle for a little while. <sighs> Big breath into the back of your body. And then exhale to allow the body, the spine to just dangle downwards towards the mat. One more full breath. And then exhale out. <sighs> On your next inhale breath, slowly lift the head up, hands to support you. Let's have a sit back down onto the mat, all the way down. All right. How are we doing so far? Hello, rainbow. <laughs> We're going to come back to a double pigeon. And we're going to twist from there again. So we've done this at the beginning of the session. And now that we've done quite a few standing twists, maybe you will be able to feel a difference. So right shin bone either in front of your left or right shin bone on top of your left. Okay, so we're sitting up tall. Always use a blanket if you don't feel grounding. So especially if the sit bones are lifted one way or the other. Okay, so inhale, we pull the chest up first. And as I exhale, option one, you're going to take your right hand to the outside of your right foot. So maybe you can just resist the right foot. Your left hand is just behind your back. You can inhale to pull your chest up. And as I exhale, I'm going to start to turn and twist the spine towards the left side of the room. So you can stay here. So this is one option. The other option is to have the elbow, so right elbow, outside of the right foot. So you can do the same as you did earlier. So you can have a palm in prayer or maybe just top hand into a fist. So press the palm down, push the foot against the elbow and turn and rotate the ribcage. So feel where your neck needs to be. So you're not really twisting the neck so far back. So take care of your neck. So pushing the foot into the elbow, elbow resisting into the foot so that we're not slumping down towards the legs. Enjoy the twist here. It's grounded, it's safe. And you're able to spin the torso fully if we resist okay, elbow and foot. Two more full breaths. One more big breath here. And the next inhale breath. Slowly look forward. Support yourself to come back up. And maybe we just go forward into your double pigeon, just one more time. So just walking your hands forward towards the front, releasing the forehead down. Maybe onto a block, maybe onto a support, a towel, a blanket, whatever that you need. And then inhale, let's slowly come back up. Exhale, release the legs, okay? Taking the legs up forward, padding out the knees. And change sides, left shin in front of your right. So if you're adopting this version, you can also take the arm out. Yeah, it doesn't need to be against the bottom foot. So we can also lift the chest and turning the chest to the right side of the room this time. Or if you're taking the double pigeon version, so again, left shin on top of your right. Okay, if you want to take the elbow outside of the foot, go for it. So take an inhale breath, pull the chest forward first. And as exhale, this time you can use your right hand, your right fist, just to punch into the lower hand and sort of push the foot into the elbow, elbow into the foot and see if they can rotate the spine. So less of the neck, just find a position for your neck where you feel most comfortable. 
remember this version is fine as well. So if you want to sit up a little bit more, that is okay too. Okay. One more big breath here. Maybe a bonus round. So chest up and then turning the torso and turning the ribcage. And on the next inhale breath, we slowly look back forward. Okay, and start to inch our way forward again. So hands can come forward. If you need a block, if you need a towel, if you need padding to position your forehead, go for it. And if you don't have all these things at home, sometimes you can just use your hands just to support your forehead so that you're just lying there and you're comfortable. And if you cannot go down so low, then just have your elbows onto your legs and you can lean forward and just close your eyes for a couple of breaths. Just feeling the breath expanding the ribcage wherever you are. And then softening the ribcage. One more full breath here. And exhale out. Alright, the next inhale breath. Slowly come all the way back up. We are going to be lying down on the mat. So let's release the legs first. Do grab your blanket or a towel or something that is going to help you to feel support on the back of your head. And you know you need support if you lie down on the mat and your chin tends to lift up towards the ceiling. So you don't feel like your back of your head is long or the back of your neck is long. So you can just open up the blanket. Yeah, just have a thin layer so that it's supporting your head when you lie down. So we're going to take a supine crescent pose. So where I feel that my hips are right in the middle of the mat, because we've done quite a bit of twisting here, so I like us to stretch out just the side body, but in a very passive position. So I'm going to start to lie down on the mat and look like a crescent moon. So hips are down in the center, legs are outstretched, okay? So my head can be aligned on the blanket, whatever height that you need. So I'm going to take both my arms and both my feet towards the bottom right corner. So they're both moving to the same side. So I adjust my shoulders until I feel both shoulders are flat down. Both back of my hips are flat down. And maybe I'm crossing one ankle over the other, just a way down on my left hip. So the left hip shouldn't be floating away from the mat. We want a slight stretch on the left side of the body now. So I can take the left arm overhead as well and use the right hand just to give your left wrist a little bit of an extension. If you don't like it, then just place your right arm beside you so you feel longer on the left side of your body. And you can just stay here. So if the crossing of the ankle doesn't suit you on one side, then just cross the other way and see whether it makes a difference. And just explore. So we take a few breaths here to feel long on the left side of your body from your heel all the way up towards your left armpit, towards your left fingers. It's quite a yummy and delicious stretch for the left side of your body. And you want to imagine the breath that we worked on. So the expansion around the base of your ribcage. Yeah, it is being worked on here as well as you give the left ribcage a little bit more room. One more full breath. You can stay here for as long as you want. Yeah. Or we start to move towards the other side. So I keep my hips right in the center. And then I'm going to just kind of shift myself. Yeah, so that my both feet, both legs are towards the opposite corner. And now I'm going to roll my arms, my shoulders towards the opposite corner as well. So this time around, your left hand can be holding onto your right wrist. Just to give you that extension. And my hips, both sides of the hips are down. Maybe I'm crossing the ankle. You explore what, what works best for you. So for me, it's left over right. So my right side of the body is where I want to feel the stretch a little bit more and I can stay. So head in a comfortable position. Lengthen up from your right fingertips all the way down to your right heel. I feel that when you're breathing, the base of your rib pitch, on the right side especially, that's the part where you're trying to expand, expand, expand. One more big breath here. And then when you're ready, you can slowly turn the arm and turn the feet. So take your time. You're going to come into a last couple of twists. So my feet are set. 
about keep distance apart or even wider so you can take your mat, uh, feet about mat width apart okay then we're gonna slowly drop the knees side to side so your arms can be away from your body so the knees are just windshield wiping left and right left and right left and right left and right so allow the body to lift off the mat so on one side yeah so when my knees are going to the right side my left buttock is lifting off the mat when my knees are going towards the left side, my right buttock is lifting off the mat. Then I'm going to stay here and just allow again the right side body to lengthen a little bit more. Maybe I turn my head away from my knees. And on the next inhale breath, let's slowly come back and change. So knees to the right and maybe the hips to the left. And inhale, come back. Slowly give yourself a hug, a squeeze. Maybe lifting your forehead all the way into your knees. And then gently find your shavasana pose. I'm going to ask you to take your hands, okay? One hand to the belly, one hand to the heart. Elbows just softening down towards the mat. And let's breathe into our hands. So when you inhale, just allow the breath to expand. The front of your body, it doesn't matter where the breath is, whether it's on your belly area or whether it's just the chest. But you want to feel the front of your torso just expanding and softening. We let the jaw soften, the facial muscles soften. And feeling the belly expanding with the inhalation. And just the front body falling with the exhalation. One more big breath. And enjoy your Shavasana. Thank you for joining me for this practice. I hope you stay well and healthy and I hope to see you very, very soon.